Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, part six of the Mang 135th scale Jag Panther G1. So last time uh, I worked on steps 14 through 17 and it became a rather lengthy video, but there was no getting around it. Um, all of it uh, went pretty, pretty well. Hardest part was doing the cable on the side and figuring out a way to get that wound up. Um, but eventually I got it and uh, am I totally stoked with it? I don't know. It's just kind of, it was kind of fiddly, but it worked. So on to step 18. So just like I always do, I'll demonstrate the first few uh, components, you know, how I cut them from the sprue and clean them up uh, for any newcomers. Um, other than that, I'll be doing that off camera and just doing the actual construction. So the first thing I need to do is um, So I'm not, so on these instructions with certain parts, it will tell you what, uh, whatever version you're working on, in my case, I'm doing version one, but in this case, this shows version three, those parts go there. Um, I am not doing version three, so I will not be using that part and I will not be putting the lifting jack block on the, um, on the back which is kind of weird because it indicated that I should uh, cut those holes in the deck earlier. So I don't know, I'll have to, I'll have to take a look and see what I need to do. So I've been looking back at the instructions. I should not have drilled those holes there. So I'm gonna have to fill those. So if you are new, and you're just watching, then I will demonstrate how I do fix those. So let me get uh, what I need together. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a piece of sprue, runner, whatever you wanna call it, and then I'm going to get a candle get some fire on there then I'm going to get this piece of sprue here and just slowly rotate it over the flame to soften it up without dipping it in the wax and then stretch it thusly Okay, let that solidify for a sec. Move the candle. Hopefully it's thin enough. Cut the sprue. Yeah. So cut a little bit more of that off of there. Basically, basically I'm making a plug. And what that will do is that will allow me to fill that in with a minimal of fuss. I don't even remember where I saw how to do this, but whoever thought this up uh, probably way back when, you're a genius and I am thankful for that. So anyway, let's get some cement. dab on there pushing it as far as it'll go same thing with that one push it in there and then we'll let that dry really good so while that's doing that then we can move on to the jack block that is for this vehicle vehicle one two and four so we need the jack block uh, the base uh, the photo etch part and uh, this bracket here which is a 14 so a 13 14 and 33 there's 33 there's 13 
and here is 14. Let's zoom in real quick, like. If I can see what I'm doing, since it's completely fascinating. Like that. Move that over to the side. And then I'll go ahead and cut out shnikes. Hooked into my finger. Uh, 24 here. And again, I'll demonstrate how I do photo etch as well. This is kind of cool. I can get all my demonstration stuff done right out of the gate so I don't have to bore you with that later because my videos become over long enough as it is. But I just use a, an old X-Acto blade that's not too worn out. <clears throat> just cut it out right here on my cutting mat. As I've said before, I've never had a problem with uh, my parts bending when I cut them out. So it can be done with low care. So then I just use my sharp cutter here. Cut these little bits off. These little sprue gates. As close as I can. Then using my favorite sanding stick, which is 400 grit, just get those little burrs off on this one here. It's too narrow, so I'll use this. Now, when it comes to painting this, um, generally I don't get too clever with my painting. I don't try and paint, you know, wood grain or anything into it. I figure at this scale, scale distance and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty much going to look like a solid color. Now, is that being lazy? Maybe. But I've never found it necessary, especially since I'm going to be weathering it and everything else, and it's just going to pretty much disappear um, under weathering and stuff. So now, let's see, then I'll use my sanding stick again, get that. sand it off and then using the flat of my blade I will scrape the uh, I'm gonna trim this a little bit mm, that's pretty flat scrape the seam line off like that I could sand it but I kind of like using this because it's flat and it doesn't uh, it doesn't round because I'm not the best at sanding sometimes and if I don't get it just absolutely perpendicular and parallel and everything else square to the surface I'm sanding I risk rounding it off so I use the flat of the blade and the trick is don't do it like this because you'll gouge the plastic you get it at a slight angle backwards and just scrape so for those of you who watch my videos all the time, yes, I do this at the beginning of every video and you're probably tired of hearing it, but this is for people who may just be joining us in this particular video. Okay, so that's cleaned up. So then for the photo etch, here's how I take care of cleaning the photo etch. So you might be able to see there's just a little bit of a burr there from... I'm cutting it off so I've been using this file here but you can also use uh, just a regular sanding stick or anything else hold it firmly in this uh, Tamiya um, bending pliers and just have it barely sticking out so that way I can file it and if it hangs up I don't have to worry about it bending the part and I just get the burr off just like that and then same with the tip of this one. Doesn't take much because this brass is really soft. 
so it's fairly easy to clean up. Same thing on this side. Like that. And then the tip of that one right there. And we're ready to go. Let's see, that looks pretty good. All right, now, as far as bending this, um, you can see here in the instructions, it shows the part with the edges bent up. So when you get, generally when you get parts like this, there'll be a, like a little score line etched into it. So that score line is going to be on the inside. So you want to take the part and bend it up like that, 90 degrees in this case. This one's not quite 90 degrees yet. And I mentioned uh, in my last video that there are bending tools, um, more elaborate bending tools uh, available. And they look like they really do a good job. I've just never found the need to buy one yet. It's basically an aluminum, a machined aluminum or plastic sometimes. Um, base with a plate on top often with different shapes and sizes and uh, a knob that you screw down to leave the portion exposed of the brass that needs to be bent and then you just use a straight edge like a single edge razor blade or something like that and um, you can bend it up like that. Now they're really look like, if you do a lot of photo etch, I think it would be a good investment. I mean, they're depending on your, your uh, definition of expensive, they can be somewhat pricey, especially for a beginner that, you know, maybe doesn't do that much photo etch. But if you do a lot, it probably is a good investment. I've just never found the need to do one yet because I use this fairly well. But it might make it a little bit easier. So anyway, enough blabbing. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this bottom in here. Which I really don't see why you need a piece down here because it's going to be face down. You're not going to see underneath it, but I guess it's to give you something to... Be annoyed with because it won't go into position like there we go okay so then take my extra thin quick setting and you know what let me check something first yeah you want to make sure you you get it glued to the proper direction. It's it's a base, so you don't you need you do need to make sure it's glued in properly because those two pins right there are gonna go into locating holes somewhere. here now there are some um, there's like some <clears throat> breaks in the molding of this whatever this strap or whatever it is right here some little locator pins for this photo edge part 
so you know exactly where it goes. Just like that. Oh, let's see. So, in keeping with the rest of the photo etch I've done on this build, I'm going to use my <coughs> Gator's Grip Acrylic Hobby Glue. It's really thick. And uh, I've rediscovered during this particular project how good this stuff works. Super glue works really good, CA glue, whatever you want to call it. But the problem with it, the problem I have sometimes is uh, you run the risk getting something not glued perfectly straight. Now I'm sure this Gator's Grip wouldn't work in every application. So far on this one, it's worked really well. It's really strong. It's a little, a little bit flexible. So if you bump stuff, it's not going to uh, dislodge it. Sometimes with CA glue, <clears throat> it'll just pop clean off. If you bump it just right. And you don't want that. So then that goes right there. Let that dry up for a minute. While I'm letting that dry, I'm going to check my check the holes here and see if yeah they're they're not quite big enough. Found I've had to re-drill some of these holes. It might work better if I actually had um, if I had drill bits that were actually in millimeter increments instead of these numbered things because I don't know what the uh, metric equivalent is to these numbers. I'm just eyeballing it here. Okay, so I got those re-drilled ended up being a 62 on the old drill bit set there okay so let's test fit this you know what first I need to scrape this down a bit there's a mold seam line right there This could do with a little clean up here. better all right so let's go ahead and press that into place the 
these two pins off here because these are if it mounts in the bag. And so this actually doesn't go on here because <laughs> it doesn't go on the back. So it helps to pay attention to what you're doing. So let's drop this in here, just like that. Voila, that's just stellar. <clears throat> All right, so that is just resting in there right now. Let's see, do I want to glue it in or do I want to paint it separately? Let's take a look at the color scheme. And yeah, I'm gonna paint that separately. So I'm gonna set that aside because it shows that it's bare wood and not the camouflage color. So let's put that with the jack, keep that over the side. As a matter of fact, put it in my spare parts box here for things to be attached later. All right, so next, <coughs> so we got that. So now we need A40, which looks like the uh, extinguisher the extinguisher of fire so next up we got the fire extinguisher here it goes on this rack on the side nice whoops ah. oh man now the nice thing is this is like how oh, crikey that just it's uh protrudes far enough that i'll be able to paint it red really easily Heh, just kidding from everything i've read these things were painted the same color as the vehicle so it's one of those sources of contention but i subscribe to the uh Painted the same color as the vehicle extinguisher thing. All right, so we got that. Now we need A24 and A36. Oh, wrong sprue. Which is the crowbar, whatever you want to call it, and the uh, inertia starter crank handle thing another technical term for you it's just a quick note i mentioned it in one of the other videos but <clears throat> one of the things i like about this uh this kit and a lot of newer kits is the fact that these uh, brackets these tool mounting brackets they're doing a lot better job of making them look a little more realistic so Older kits generally, you know, sometimes they'll just have just like a strap looking thing across there. And then when they do put the handles on, it's usually just a solid block of plastic. And your options are to try and carefully hollow that out or, <coughs> um, you know, use aftermarket photo etch. And while those are really cool, they're also really extremely tiny and uh, they can be quite um tedious but you know if you want it to look a little more realistic you know you kind of got to do something i guess but i like the fact that they do these now personally i don't think i'll ever i mean i'm not i don't want to say never but i don't think i'll ever do photo etch tool clamps just because they are so small and you got to assemble them just like the real deal and they generally are operating and that's you know that's not for me uh, there are, however, some new uh, 3D printed handle sets. Uh, I can't remember the brand, but I'm going to put a link um, to uh, a 
Canadian guy named Evan. And uh, if you, you know, look much on German vehicle stuff, you'll probably recognize the name of his channel, Panzermeister36. He does a lot of uh, really excellent weather weathering tutorials and stuff like that. He's really into German armor and stuff. And he did a review on some 3D printed tool clamps. So I'm going to put a link in the description box below so you can go check that out if you want. But it's a really good alternative to having to do PE or having to uh, stick with um, the kit supplied solution because a lot of them, like I said, they just they don't look that great and it's a good way to, you know, kind of spruce it up a bit. So I'll put that down below to check out if you like. <clears throat> So this uh, goes on the bottom of that rack there. So let's see if I can get this thing picked up and put it into place. And let's see, the clamps go down. The handles of the clamps, the levers, whatever you want to call them. But there's some nice locating pins and me matching holes there so that should fit on there nicely like that So then let's work on this starter handle. All right, and this goes up here in those two. Those two holes, so let's get that there and there. So there and there. Like that. All right, so next up I need to do these two A43 parts, which are um, the uh, clamps or brackets that hold the ends of the tow cables. So these go, I don't know if you can see them, but there's couple of raised spots here that these go in between. Now there's two sets of them here, 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 and here. These here are for uh, version 3 for the, uh, you know, that's where these clamps would go on version 3. So the best thing to do is actually to kind of remove those. And the nice thing is, is if you're really careful and you just cut those off. If you cut them off flat enough, they end up looking like part of the uh,
flame cut detail on this back plate because it's there's a lot of it. So you just cut it off there and maybe scrape it a little bit so it doesn't protrude. And uh, when you paint it and weather it, you shouldn't even know they were ever there. Pure magic. So these go here. So I'm just gonna set that in place and hope it doesn't pop off when I apply the cement. Oh, look at that. Press it firmly in place. Oh man, twist it back the way it's supposed to go. Good. Now, if you glue this right and you let the uh, cement do its thing, and you press it down, those two little ridges will appear to be little weld beads. So there's that. Do the same thing here. Carefully smash that into place. like that. So with that, that, uh, that finishes up step 18. All right, so on to step 19. So I need to glue parts A5 and A6 and A29 on each end and then some photo etch parts for the uh, barrel cleaning rod tube. So let us get those parts. So here is another um, place where modern kits are starting to really get it, is these sprue gates are on the flat surface as opposed to being on the curved surface, which means less likelihood of messing up the curved surface when trying to clean them. Because the way they're made, you just cut them like that and kaboom you know you might leave like a little tiny bit of fuzz there but that is like easily cleaned off without digging into the the curve of the piece so that really that really helps when uh, trying to avoid marring a curved surface. I still have to deal with the seam, the full length of the thing, but at least it's all continuous, so it's not as big a deal. So that goes like that. Now let's take a look at something here. I don't think, yeah, it doesn't matter 
which direction it goes. There's two locating pins and uh, it fits the same both ways. So then when gluing this, I want to make sure that, you know, eyeball it from the end and make sure this outside edge is nice and lined up to minimize the amount of cleanup that will have to be done. So here is what I'm going to do first. Get out a couple of my specialized round surface clamping devices, aka um, clothes pins or clothes pegs, depending on where you're from. Those work really nice because of the little curvy bit there in the middle. These were indispensable when gluing barrels back in the old days, the old two piece barrels. So you could make sure you had everything all squished together and being wood not much likelihood of uh, damaging the plastic so for this one since I don't want it to dry quite as quickly while I get things lined up I'm going to use my regular to me extra thin as opposed to the quick setting so a little bit there A little bit there. A little there. Just going down the length so I get a nice nice bead of cement going on. make sure use my tweezers here make sure it's lined up as closely as humanly possible like that so we'll let that dry a little bit before I put the end caps on so the next thing I need is F36 which is one of the uh, tow um, C hooks for towing that goes there and then the bolt cutters A18 um, which I think I will glue on later after I paint them because those wouldn't be painted the same color as mm, let me look I might glue them in place. If I can paint it in place, then I'll, I'll just glue it. So we need that, and then we need the other C-clamp, which is F36. Which is right there. I think I am going to go ahead and glue the bolt cutters in place because where they are it'll be easy to paint even with it on the uh, on the model Alright, so I clean the hook up, it's in place. Now I gotta do is put a little bit of glue on there, like that. And like that. So there's that. So let's take a look. Now let's go ahead and do the shovel while this other stuff's drying. 
or spade or whatever you call it in your neck of the woods. All right, that's cleaned up and this goes right. Okay. So I'm going to take this opportunity to clean this thing off here. So basically, I'm just going to cut it. Hopefully, if I can get my scissors in there. Oh man. I'll cut it as close as I can. Like that. And like that. Tell you, it pays to pay attention to what you're doing. There we go. out with my flat blade here and I'm doing that so there's that and a little bit of sanding like that and it should be virtually invisible these blades are awesome Okay, I'm going to let this dry really well because um, the glue is just a little bit still kind of, or the plastic that squeezed out of the seam, still a little soft, so I don't want to take a chance of messing it up. So while that is drying, um, step 20 is the next step, which is the cables. Um, I'm going to put them together, but I am not going to install them yet. I'll wait a later to do that, but I will put them, whoa, put them together. So we got the cable here, and uh, they are supposed to be 108 meters long. <laughs> Just kidding, millimeters. So let's. Straighten this thing out. And I said it at the beginning of the uh, series when I was looking at the contents of the box, but man, it's pretty, pretty cool that they use actual metal. cable or wire whatever you want to call it for the tow cables because a lot of times some of the manufacturers like to give you some nylon string which is okay but I really don't like the way it paints and it's just you know it's just not metal it's not metal cable and there's lots of people like to, you know, make their own metal cables. And, uh, you know, most of the time they turn out pretty good, but sometimes they look like, you know, they're homemade because it's really hard to get the um, proper 
spin or um, oh, I don't know what would you call it twist and it just doesn't really look right okay enough of that let's uh, measure out 108 millimeters So here's the big question, now that I think about it. Is it 108 millimeters of wire that you need or 108 millimeters of cable end to end? So let's take a look, shall we? So from there to there, I would venture to guess that that includes the ends tow cable ends so let's cut off a couple of those and we'll take a look at this another thing to note on these things is these uh, tow cables the ends are slide molded so you actually have a decent attachment point there so that is really cool because sometimes you know they just butt up against or they have like a channel that's molded in the back that you kind of lay it in but it never quite lays down in there perfectly all the way so yeah that's really ooh, that's really cool really uh, awesome thing so let's take a look get kind of a rough idea get a little bit of tape here all right, so I measured the cable, and here is what we have, and it's not very groovy. So it says 108 millimeters. I don't know where they get that number because the distance between here and here, the ends of those cables, is more like roughly 125 millimeters. And that's just the cable from there to there. So if one were to cut the cable at 108 millimeters long, it would end up being too short to fit between the mounting point here and here. So that's fine. However, if I do that cable that long to stretch between, the remaining portion is too short so what to do so here's what i've decided i'm going to do now i could try and find some other wire or whatever but you know what i'm not going to um i could order you know a cable set from one of those places that sells aftermarket i'm not doing that either so on the one side i am going to do it to the length that it will fit between those clamps then for the other side i'm just going to leave it I mean, it's actually going to be quite a bit short. I was going to kind of coil it up on the side or something just so you might not notice the length as much. Um, but I haven't decided. So let me ponder that a bit while I uh, look at other stuff. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> here's what I'm going to do about the cable. Um, I don't want to go half measures here. So I think I will just coil this one up. Let's save it for other projects in the future. And I'm going to go ahead and order spare cables. Eureka makes some pretty nice ones. Very good price. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I was going to try and, I don't know, cheat. But I just can't bring myself to do it. So that's what I'm going to do with those. So let's get back to, so that takes care of step 20. Isn't that just dandy? So let me get back to this ammo or this, uh, what do you call this thing? Oh man. Cleaning rod storage container here. Get this cleaned up. So I'm basically using my knife on the edge <clears throat> here like this. 
and then I'll use my sponge sander to finish it off <clears throat> and on these there are um, There's a little locator pin there and a notch right there. So it's just a matter of making sure you get it facing the right direction. <clears throat> and ta-da. Okay, so here's an interesting development. So when I put that cap in there, spread the end of the uh, tube out, out. So it's gonna be a matter of rounding this hole out because it's not really super round. So I gotta make sure that it's not going to disfigure this thing so that that's better right there <clears throat> much better so <clears throat> just using the tip of the knife I'm just gonna round that out a little bit better there's like some flat spots in there that shouldn't be in there so in order to keep it from splitting the seam having to clean that up so let's try it now oh yeah there we go that'll work cool so Put a little bit of uh, cement there. I'm gonna have to re-sand that right there. So again, I will set it aside to dry and move on to step 21. So step 21 is the rear hatch. Um, I need to drill some holes again, so I'm going to get C63. And get that cleaned up and drill the holes. Um, for that, and again, this is for people just joining us if they haven't watched other of my videos. <coughs> I need to drill these two holes out. For, oh, for an outside grab handle. There's one on the inside and one on the outside, looks like. Yeah. I need to drill that out and I think that one will be let's try number 65 that one seems a bit large let's take a look so that part is C56 let's see what size the pins are on that Actually, I think this will work just fine. Put it in the old pin vise, tighten it down, and drill away, drill away, drill away. If 
I can get a grip on this piece. Safety tip of the day, whenever you're drilling through here, don't put your finger like that. I know I've never done it, but hey, safety first, I always say. Drill them both. Once they're drilled, then I'll use my knife to trim those down like that. And uh, that's that. So now I'll clean this up and I'll cut off the interior parts, which are C57, 15, and 14. So before I glue these other parts in, I'm going to glue this handle on here. So it can dry good before I start monkeying around. With it. cement on the inside okay I'll let that dry and then clean these parts all right so first I'm gonna put this piece on here thusly Then these parts here, it says not to glue them, but I'm going to glue them anyway because I don't plan on opening, opening this hatch back here for anything. So there's not really any sense in doing that. So that, okay. So there's these little rectangular pegs go in the rectangular holes. So I'll put that on there like that. And then very clumsily. Put those on there. Like that. like that so that's all in place so I don't like the way that looks so I'm gonna mess around with it a little bit because this one's crooked for some reason I have a feeling it has to do with the uh, placement of the holes or these pegs here so I need to clean those up a little bit so they'll fit better. All right, it's all in place, so now I can glue it. Mainly 
definitely concerned with the hinges first. Then I will glue the hatch itself. All right, then we have this antenna mount. Goes right there. And this, uh, little doohickey here making I don't know what it's for maybe get to get rid of uh, spent shells that's what I'm going with I think I'll glue the hinge portion portion in first. side like that so there's that so that completes step 21 all right so in step 22 um, you have to remember to use whichever version you're using. So this is all step three here. Only one piece goes on for step one, and that's a little cover plate, D27, which is very small. right there and that goes in these there's little very very almost indistinguishable pins on the back of that part that fit in some very minuscule indentations on the back of that superstructure. All right, so that takes care of step 22. So step 23 is for the roof plate. So before I start 23, I'm going to end this video here, the end of part six, which is uh, pretty much finishes off, looks like uh, most of the side and back upper hull fittings. Uh, the rest, the next, Next three steps are the um, 
superstructure roof. So I'm going to save that for part seven. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a regular dude. If you have any hints, tips, blah, 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 put them in the comments section down below. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. And until next time, I will see you all later.